the final conclusion of this dunya will be what? The trumpet. The trumpet. And this is something that is very explicit in the Quran and Sunnah. وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ This is very explicit. And the day, the sur, what is the sur? The sur is literally a trumpet. It is something that you blow into and that uh, uh, voice amplifies to the sound of a trumpet. This is a sur. And uh, as you know, the Yehud, they have the sur as their religious symbol of calling people. That thing that you blow into, it is something that they consider to be sacred and holy. And that's why if you go and visit the house of an Orthodox, whatnot, they will find, you will find this as an icon of their faith. It is something that goes back to other faith traditions as well. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that the blowing of the trumpet will be something that is very sudden. People will not expect it. وَمَا أَمْرُ السَّاعَةِ إِلَّا كَلَمْحِ الْبَصَرِ أَوْ هُوَ أَقْرَبِ The affair of the judgment day is like the twinkling of an eye or even faster than that. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith is in Muslim Imam Ahmad and other books as well by the way, the trumpet will be blown. And as soon as people hear it, everyone will turn to face the direction of the sound. So the trumpet will be blown and all of mankind will look to where that sound is coming from. And he said, the first person to hear the trumpet will be a man who is busy repairing the tank that is meant to supply water to his camels and he will fall dead. And the people will start falling dead after him. So the Prophet told us the first person to hear the trumpet will be the one who's preparing the pool for the camels, you know. Hmm. Now, putting everything together, these must be the people that are fleeing the fire from Yemen and they're already in a sham. You, there's no other way to put it all together. They're all walking towards Sham, the fire is behind them, and now this is happening. And this is taking weeks now, because if from walking from Yemen to Sham, it will take a while. And therefore, in the course of this, things will happen. So, another hadith seems to say that at some level, life is almost, almost back to normal, as normal as normal can be when you're fleeing a fire, but you're still walking for weeks on end. The Prophet wasallam said, the hour will not occur, Except that a man has put a cloth in front of him to sell it, but he will not be able to sell it or fold it up. The transaction has been done, but the cloth will not be sold. The hour will not be established until a man has milked his she camel and has taken away that milk, but he will not be able to drink it. The hour will not be established until a man is repairing a tank for his livestock and the water for his animals, and he will not be able to pour the water for his animals. The hour will not be established until a man raises a luqma of food to his mouth, and before the luqma reaches his mouth, he will not be able to eat it. This is a hadith that is very, very explicit, and it shows us what? It shows us that the qiyamah and the trumpet will be sudden. Now, if you look at all of these examples, especially the first one, buying and selling a garment, life has come to some sense of normalcy. People have to buy and sell even as they're walking for many days and weeks. So from this we seem to, to, to infer that the Qiyamah will be an absolutely sudden experience. No one will be able to predict the trumpet being blown. And life will almost resume to semi-normal. People will be eating and drinking. People will be buying and selling. People will be milking the camels. And then the trumpet will be blown. And the trumpet will cause all of mankind to die. Will anyone be safe from this? The Quran mentions an istithna. وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَقُ فِي الصُّورِ فَفَزِعَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَابَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ What's next? إِلَّا إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ There is an exception. What is this exception? This has caused a lot of ikhtilaf. And we do not know because our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith is Sahih Bukhari, when the Qiyamah trumpet is blown, the second one, and I come to 
I will find Musa ahead of me, hmm. holding on to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now listen to this. And I do not know, did he wake up before me? Was he resurrected before me? Or is he one of those whom Allah azza wa jalla said about illa ma sha'a rabbuk? And his first falling down counted for this one. What was his first falling down, his first fainting? When he asked to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, La adri, I do not know. Is he one of those that the exception is for? So, if the Prophet does not know who the exception is for, do you think there's any point in me and you discussing it? <laughs> End of story. There will be some groups of people. Now, our scholars, this hasn't stopped them and they love to discuss, mashallah, tabarakallah. Some of their views make sense. For example, some of the makhluqat in the heavens, the angels, the trumpet might not necessarily affect them. So it's going to affect us in this world. This seems to be the case. Now we also know that the one who will blow the trumpet is Israfil. Jayid. Israfil is not mentioned in the Quran. What is mentioned in the Quran? The trumpet will be blown into. This is what is mentioned. وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَخُوا فِي الصُّورِ So someone is blowing into the trumpet. The name is not mentioned. One could say he is implied. Fair enough. But he is not mentioned by name. That's very clear. How do we know therefore that Israfi will blow the trumpet? From hadith literature. From his hadith. Is Israfi mentioned in the hadith? Yes, definitely. Allahumma rabba Jibra'il wa Mika'il wa Israfil. This is mentioned, for example, one du'a. And in another hadith, famous hadith, the Prophet said, it is in Sunan al Tirmidhi, Kayfa an'um, how can I relax? How can I relax when Israfil has raised the trumpet to his lips and he is looking at the Arsh direction? waiting for the command to come to blow. This hadith is authentic in Tirmidhi. How can I relax when Israfil has raised the trumpet and he's just waiting for the command to come and blow? How can I relax? How can I just take it easy when this has already happened? And one can say this is also one of the precursors of Judgment Day, but this is in the other world, not in our world. This is the world of the angels. In the world of the angels, there are some signs of Judgment Day. One of them, at some point in time, Israfil raised the trumpet and took the breath in. Now he's waiting for the breath to come out. And Israfil can hold as long as he wants. So how close are we? So the Prophet is saying, how can I? How can I? The hadith in Musadrak al-Hakim, the Prophet said that Israfil is staring at the throne and he has not blinked for so long that his eyes are now glazed like glass. Hmm. Out of fear oh. that if he blinks, he'll miss the command. So this is a sign in the world of the angels that judgment day is close. So the trumpet will be blown and فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ رَضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ Okay, we have one of the signs left. And I'm mentioning it last, even though it is not the actually the last, but it helps explain the last days of mankind. This is probably, this is before the Dabba and before the sun rising from the west. And the tenth sign is the great fire. Nar, the great fire. And the great fire is not mentioned in the Quran. But it is mentioned in numerous ahadith. Of them, the famous one is Sahih Muslim, that Qiyamah will not come until you see 10. And in this hadith he said, and the last of them, the great fire. So there shall be something called the great fire. What is this great fire? Combining all of the ahadith together, combining all of the ahadith together, uh, it appears that the great fire is something that will begin from Yemen, to be more precise, from Aden. In one hadith it says from Aden, which is the port city of Aden. And it will force the people, it will force the people to flee from it. And they will be forced to go to Bilad al-Sham. So the fire will rage. Now what will be the fuel of this fire? 
what will cause something that will scorch the earth one mile after the other and keep on going all the way from the tip of one side of the Arabian Peninsula all the way to the other side and yeah. it is well known that in this land most of it is nothing but sand what will cause the fuel of this fire again go back to some of the things I've been postulating and Allah knows best so there shall be a great fire at the end of times and it could be miraculous it could be something that Allah Azza wa Jalla says all of this is allowed and the people will be forced to flee for their lives they will be walking They'll be riding, they'll be running, they'll be on camels, and they will have to stop to rest. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Hudayfa ibn Usayd al Ghifari said, One day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to us when we were sitting in a room and we were talking about the judgment. He said, Judgment will not come until you see 10 signs. Now we come to the end of our classes. Once again, I go to these 10 signs. Number one, this is not in order. Remember, he's just saying all of them are there. Number one, the rising of the sun from the west. Number two, the dukhan. Number three, the dab. Number four, ya'juj and ma'juj. Number five, Isa ibn Maryam. Khuruj Isa ibn Maryam. Number six, the dajjal. Number seven, eight, nine, the three earthquakes. One in the east and one in the west and one in Jazirat al-Arab. And the last of them, number 10, is the Nar that will come from Adan. And Adan is the famous city in Yemen. Tasuq aw tahshurun nas. It will gather the people. Tabitu ma'ahum haythu batu wa tuqilu ma'ahum haythu qalu. And it will stop when they need to stop and it will go when they're going to go. In other words, it is something that is truly miraculous that it will force the people to flee but in a manner that they can still rest a while. So they will go because you cannot walk from Aden all the way to Bilad al-Sham except in two, three weeks. It's not going to be immediate. And in this course of time, people will be forced to rest. When they rest, the fire will rest with them. When they wake up, they'll be forced to move again until they stop and they will continue to do this. Now, once again, it appears that these people are simply not believers because... Other ahadith tell us that judgment will not come upon believers. And with, regret, with, with respect to Bilad al-Sham, with respect to modern day you know, Syria, and again, when we say Sham, frankly, most likely it is Aqsa. When we say Sham, don't think of yani, the modern country Syria, because that was what the classical Arabs call that entire region. But it might be Damascus, it might be Syria, but I'm saying technically all of that region is Bilad al-Sham. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day, hadith is authentic Muslim Ahmad, he pointed to uh, the north, which is Bilad al-Sham. And he pointed to Sham and he said, in that direction you will be gathered. In that direction is Ardul Mahshar. Ardul Mahshar. What is Ardul Mahshar? Ardul Mahshar is the land of resurrection. Now, does this mean that Qiyamah will take place in Sham because Mahshar is, Hashar is Judgment Day. The response is no. There are two types of Hashar. There is the final showdown Hashar of this dunya and then there is the Hashar of Judgment Day in the next life. Ba'd al-Mawt, Ba'd al, you know, the trumpet and whatnot. The Hashar of this dunya, there is no Qiyamah. It's just a death. And that's what he's talking about, the Ard al-Mahshar. All of the last remnants of mankind will be gathered in one place. All of mankind, whoever remains, will be gathered in one place. And that is why it is called, what? Ard al-Mahshar. What will that land be? Bilad al-Sham. Bilad al-Sham. And so they will continue to go there until finally they are all gathered in one place and then the final very end of mankind will take place and that is the trumpet being blown and we'll talk about that right now inshallah ta'ala but before we get there one of the things that has caused me to pause and contemplate for many many years and these are topics that i have been reading about and thinking about and reflecting about for literally 20 years of my life thinking about these issues and whatnot and 
One of the things that has caused me consternation, to say the least, is the fact that there seems to be absolutely no mention of lands and regions far away from that central areas. Right. And the reason why this brings great consternation is because I happen to be living in some of those lands that are very, very far away and ha- seem to have absolutely no mention whatsoever. It's as if everything is simply gone. All of the events, everything is now back to where civilization began. And I have no solid explanation. Allahu A'lam Other than to say The only thing There are no humans left Except in that region And that is terrifying Even as it explains a lot About what we are reading And Allah knows best I don't know what to say Really I don't There is no mention of any land, not even Africa, Egypt, China. These were names that the Arabs knew, the Prophet ﷺ knew. It's not as if we can say, okay, this land was quote unquote undiscovered. Okay, how about Egypt, Masr? Right? How about other lands? How about Sin and Hind? Nothing is mentioned at all. At, we're talking about the last days of mankind. We're talking about Isa and Mahdi and Dajjal. It's really this area and only this area. This meaning? Which area? Bilad al-Sham in the Middle East overall. Hijaz, Mm -hmm. with not, you know, Makkah, Medina, all the... It seems that will be the only region left. And at one level, it does make sense. Because where are the big powers and where will things happen when they happen? At one level, it makes sense. Allahumma sallim. At another level, we say Allah knows best. I don't have an answer. But I have not found any reference of any... Even a hint that there will be other places, things happening... Everything seems to be happening in the central region. And this is the region where everything began in the first place. Ibrahim, Ismail, even before Noah. This basically, this is where it all is. According to legend, even Adam, all of this is legend. But anyway, so Allah knows best. I don't have any answer to this. Now we get to the issue of the Dabba. And the Dabba is mentioned in the Quran. The Dabba, the beast, is mentioned in the Quran. Surah Namal, verse 82. Uh, وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَّةً مِّنَ الْأَرْضِ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا بِآيَتِنَا لَا يُقِنُونَ This is in the Qur'an, Dabba. Once the command has been given, which means once judgment is khalas, that's it, too late now. Once the motion has been set in, that that's it, end is coming, the end is near. فَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ Is that فَإِذَا or إِذَا حتى وَإِذَا وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْرُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَّةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ We shall bring out for them دَابَّةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ A beast from this earth تُكَلِّمُهُمْ The beast will speak to them and it will say أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا بِأَتِنَا لَا يُقِنُونَ People would not believe in our science is too late. Now we told you to believe, you didn't. You did not believe. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, hadith is a Sahih Muslim, Three are the things when they appear. There is no fa'ida in a person accepting iman if they hadn't accepted it before this. Number one, the rising of the sun from the west. Number two, the dajjal. And number three, the beast of the earth. And this is a hadith that has caused a little bit of commentary controversy because dajjal, can you not accept after the dajjal comes? That's a bit of a controversy. And some ulama have said, maybe this is, you know, so anyway, that's it. But the point is, these two are explicitly mentioned. The rising of the sun from the west and the dabbatul ard, the beast of the earth. When these two happen, then there is no repentance. And if a person has not accepted iman, end of story. Now, what is this dabba and what are the details? That's what Jayid. I want to know. The Quran has only this one verse. The hadith, there is... A lot of apocryphal hadith. Hadith that are found in the very obscure works that are not mainstream. As for the famous six books of hadith, the only authentic hadith mentioned, Dabba, and that's it. 
no adjective, no description. It just mentions the beast of the earth. There is a hadith in Tirmidhi that Tirmidhi himself says is weak. It is a weak hadith without any ikhtilaf. You look it up, the Islam is obvious. There's a person in there. Clearly it is weak. But it is in Tirmidhi. And it is not an authentic hadith. But it, 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 the hadith says that the Dabba shall have with it the Asa Musa, the staff of Moses, and the Khatim Sulaiman, and the ring of Sulaiman. Right? So it says that this Dabba in one hand will carry the staff and the other hand a ring however this seems to be coming from judeo-christian sources where the beast will have the staff and the ring this is and the hadith is is, is weak or very weak to be more precise and even though it's in tirmidhi but tirmidhi himself says that this hadith is not uh, authentic in uh Mustad imam ahmed uh in Mustad imam ahmed there is a hadith that has an unknown chain once again it's weak it is not authentic in which it says that the Dabba will mark people with a symbol. The Dabba will stamp and stamp people with Iman and Kufr, who's a Muslim, who's a Kafir. And this hadith, firstly, is not authentic. Secondly, it is problematic in terms of its content. It says the Dabba will stamp people with Mu'min and Kafir. But when is the Dabba coming? There are no Mu'mins left in earth. So even from a content-wise, it doesn't make any sense. The Isnad is weak anyway. It's Muslim Imam Ahmed is a weak chain. So even from a content point of view, by the time the Dabba comes, the Quran, where is it? The Kalima, where is it? Allah, Allah is not being mentioned on earth. We already talked about that, right? That generation will come where there is no actual Quran left. So the Dabba will come at a time when it's the last day. Literally, it, it's the last day on existence. The Dabba will come out. And that is too late, obviously, at that point in time for anybody to uh, uh, accept. Now, Allah knows best, but in my humble opinion, uh, we don't have any information about the Dabba. So we leave it at it. It is a Dabba. What does it look like? You know, what it has, the Quran does not mention. The Hadith is not authentic. It is one of the uh, signs of the last day. And that's all that we know. Now, all of us living in this land have heard of the beast. We know the beast. Unfortunately, not through the Quran and uh, the, the whatnot. We know it from Christian folklore because it is something that is common in Christian folklore. The beast is, of course, believed in by many strands of Christianity. And that is because the book of Revelations mentions the beast. In fact, the book of Revelations mentions two beasts. Two beasts the yeah. beast of the water and the beast, beast of, of the, the earth. earth. And... This is interesting because the title is the beast of the land. And in the Quran, Dabata min al ard. It's very similar. The beast from the land, Dabata min al ard. And if you, for the advanced students, those are interested, Revelation 16.2 and Revelations 19.20. If you want to look it up, 16.2 and 19.20, it marks the issue of the beast. And uh, the book of Revelations also mentions that uh, the enigmatic number is 666 that will come with the beast we have no, no such thing as 666 that's only found in judeo-christian literature and i'm just narrating it to you fyi say we do not believe in this uh, in numerology anyway we do not believe in the whole issue of, of numbers and we also don't believe in 786 by the way as well guys sorry to burst your bubble but no 786 doesn't carry any weight you either write bismillah rahman rahim or you don't write anything. No need to write 786 at the top. Oh, that doesn't bring the barakah. It does not bring the barakah that you want to bring. And so it should. there's no point in doing that. I'm not saying it's haram kufur. I'm simply saying it means nothing. You might as well write 123 or 276, whatever you want to do. It doesn't mean anything. There's no point in doing that. Either you write it or you don't write it. Anyway, that was a tension. Let was get that. What were we saying? The dabba. So the dabba has no explicit information we let it as it is the quran mentions it the sunnah mentions it there's no description about it what does appear to be the case the sun rising and the dabba seem to occur within 24 hours and it is essentially the last of the 10 signs before the trumpet will be blown is that clear that's what it looks like to me the very last day it looks like from the ahadith that when the sun rises from the west, the dabba will come out in two, three hours because that's after Fajr Salah, the duha time, duha time, and the trumpet will be blown on that same day, later on someday. That's what it looks like. It doesn't say so, but that's what seems to be the case and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.